We've coded thousands of cars. We even coded motorcycles. We've coded boats. But today's a first. Today, we're coding a plane. Welcome back everybody to the Chicago Auto Pros Detailing Channel. Uh, today we're not doing an auto, we're actually doing an airplane. Behind me is the 2018 Cirrus SR22 Turbo. And since we haven't ceramic coated a plane before, we brought in the expert. This is Meridad hey. of Aviana Aircraft Aviation. Thank you. Thanks for coming out. Buddy. Yeah, thanks for having me. So I have a lot of questions. I'm sure our viewers have a lot of questions. One of the first questions that I have is maybe a short answer on this one. What is a ceramic coating and why would you put it on an airplane? Okay, well, so what a ceramic coating isn't is something you have to reapply all the time, right? Mm -hmm. So if we look at this airplane, there, there's a lot of surface area. There, there, there's, you got to work overhead, there, you know, there, there's all this stuff and wax doesn't give you that good of a protection. So you don't want to have to do this every two months. You know, depending on how you fly it. Yeah, that'll so, take a couple days out of your... <laughs> well, it, it's like a full day. People go to their hangar, disappear for a day, come back, they're like, I waxed my plane, and they come back with a beard like yours, right? <laughs> so, you know, it, it, it's not good protection, and it takes a lot of work. Right. And, and depending on how you install it, you might actually damage stuff. Um, just from buffing or scratching, there's a lot of friction involved. So, mm -hmm. what a ceramic coating does, it, it gives you a higher level of protection, but you only do it once. The downside, one of us has to install it, right? To, to get it done right. Yeah. So you're gonna get just better protection. It's gonna be a lot easier to clean. Um, we're a big fan of dry washing, which is what we'll do today. Uh, you don't make a big mess on the hangar floor and, and if you're in a water restricted place, um, you just keep your plane clean, a lot easier. I've done thousands of cars. You've done thousands of cars, ceramic coating. I know how to buff a car and, right. and the paint scheme and everything. What is different about doing a plane? Because we've never done them, we're here to sure. new. Well, so, so we the Cirrus for? is probably the most automotive paint system out of all of them. Okay. Um, in that they, they, they got really cool designs, they have really nice paint combos, but it, it's still aircraft paint. So it's actually a lot harder, which you will appreciate. It's gonna be a lot easier to finish. Mm -hmm. But because this plane, this is a composite aircraft and the composite has a specific temperature requirement. So whereas you might be able to put heat or vibration into a car, we just want to be more careful here, right? right. Um, but other than that, it, it's paint. So you're going to see the same types of defects you see on cars. You're going to see swirl marks, you're going to see scratches, you're going to see sanding marks. Um, just bread and butter paint defects that you and I know how to take out just fine. So. And we'll walk around the plane and you can kind of show us. Yeah, yeah, there's uh, a few gotchas you know, on here. But. There's some spots that you don't want to buff and, and right. keep away from them. So yeah. um, I was actually talking with some neighbors and friends telling them I'm doing an airplane and everything. And I got a same reaction from, from both of them. Like, you can do that to an airplane? Right. Is, it, is there any FAA regulations or, I mean, that's this is a great right question. Yeah, plane? that's a great question. So the FAA regulates a lot of things. Um, detailing is not one of them. Okay. So that was like one of the first things I wasn't sure about either. But here's, here's what you do need to know is, is if you're used to working on cars, I just showed you a tiny little thing on this plane where if you hit it with your face like I do sometimes, yeah. that's $100. And, and that's, that's cheap for an airplane. Right. That's a cheap fix for an airplane. Yeah. If you bump into that antenna down there, it, it, you're probably in the thousands of dollars. So right. you want to make sure you know what you're working on. You want to make sure what you can and can't work on. Gotcha. And the FAA doesn't control that, but, but your insurance company would probably appreciate it if you knew what you were doing. Right. Um, and, and, and the owner, of course. Right. <laughs> so. so this is a little bigger than I thought it was, and there's a lot of surface area here, so we should get to work. Huh? Yeah, we should get, this is a small plane. What are you talking about? <laughs> All right, let's do it. Yeah, let's walk around it, and, right, and we'll cool. talk about All right, let's walk around it. So the first step is obviously going to be wash the plane. I know there's a lot of exhaust underneath, and... Yeah, so the interesting thing with aircraft engines, they burn leaded fuel, okay. like your grandpa's car. Um, the, the lead in the fuel helps it with um, flying at higher altitudes, so that's something that they're trying to phase out, but for now we're still burning leaded fuel. So we're going to have to take some safety precautions um, okay. when we're dealing with the exhaust. The exhaust comes out of the bottom and it just kind of streaks all underneath the plane. Okay. Um, typically, the crankcases on these engines are also just vented down the bottom, so you'll see a lot of oil. 
on this particular model, this is where all the mess happens, right? Okay. Which is also the least accessible part of the plane. So that's yeah. why coating it is going to be nice. Um, that's why you brought the creeper. That's why I brought the creeper, yeah. <laughs> right under there. But you can also see there's a lot of an antennas sticking out down there. So, so a lot of little hazards that we need to be okay. mindful of. Cool. Um, up here on the wing, the leading edge of this wing, you notice is a stainless steel cuff. Yes. So this is part of the de-icing system. And actually, if you look really closely, um, there's millions of laser punched holes in there. You see those? So you can barely see it. Like it, it looks more like it's just texture. It's a little easier to see on the bottom. Okay. Um, but it's just laser punched holes and um, TKS fluid uh -huh. flows out of those. Really? So if, if we were to buff this or wax this or, or do anything that would clog those holes, um, you're gonna have a problem when you're gonna have a massive problem because okay. now you're gonna have ice building up on this wing and as you have ice building up on the wing the wing can't fly okay. right so so that's a massive massive safety issue is this something we would tape off then or um we're, we're gonna make sure to stay away from this boundary okay. uh, so the holes don't actually start till here mm -hmm. so if you took a one inch piece of tape right over it i would be worried about getting tape residue in there okay. so okay. um so we can use a little bit of thin tape but i usually using a rotary i can get close to that edge without actually hitting it yeah. um We'll kind of walk around and see what else we got going on. So as, as the aircraft flies through clouds, it, it, it can develop a static charge, which is gonna mess with the electronics. These little guys up here, these are static wicks. Okay. So they help dissipate that uh, static charge. And it, it's a composite aircraft, but it has a conductive um, layer on it to help flow that energy out. Thing is, you bump into these, um, they actually snap. I, I think, I'm not sure, but I think there's like a glass core somewhere in there. So like this inside here, there's a glass core. Yeah. I can actually, okay. Yeah. So it'll bend just like a little bit, uh -huh. but if you hit it too hard or if you just bump into it, it'll snap. How about then, this? This one looks crooked already. We didn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you just want to make sure that you don't bump into these okay. um, because that'll cause it to not dissipate static energy. And they're, they're well, somewhat redundant. Yeah, yeah, that's for, you get little arcs of electricity coming off of there. So as we go back around, these are our control surfaces. Okay. So these move up and down in flight to control the um, aircraft. We, we can already see holograms on here, right? Yeah, yeah, we've already walked through and seen them. So, so we're gonna be able to make a big difference on here. This little piece sticking off, however, this is a, it's like a trim tab. And if you hit this or move this, this is designed to be bent, so it's not very stout. Um, if we polish on this and push it down, it's gonna change how this control surface reacts. Okay. So we're gonna be very careful with those. Yeah. Um, there's a, a strip of tape here, which is there for aerodynamic purposes, also not very stout, so yeah. we're gonna be careful around those edges. Now, as I'm looking at the wing, I can see right here, like that looks like sanding marks right there. Yeah, yeah, we definitely got some sanding marks there. I mean, right. these things come out with a lot of orange peel, uh -huh. and they remove all of that because it, A, doesn't look good, and B, it's bad aerodynamics. So, yeah. so these things get entirely sanded and buffed at the factory. We got more trim tabs, more static wigs, more antennas. So yeah. lots of opportunities to break, to break something and not make a profit today, right? Be careful. Yeah, yeah, that's the, that's the thing we want to be very careful about. It. Yeah, I mean, I can see this thing stuff. sticks out just walking by. Right, like, like if, if you're, you're in your groove, you're polishing, moving around, do, 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 I dance while I polish, <laughs> boom, you're going to hit that. Okay, is there any way to take those off? Or? There is. Um, I think at that point you actually do have to have a FAA okay. mechanics license Probably not a good idea. to do that. I, I, I'm not sure. There, there's some things you can do on a plane. As an owner, um, there's some things you have to be a certified mechanic for. Okay. I, I've looked into that as well. Okay. But yeah, other than that, I, I'm excited to get going. There's, um, I forgot about these guys. So you see these little holes here? Yep. These sample ambient air pressure. So your altimeter and your vertical speed are driven off of these. Um, and your airspeed counts on it as well to some degree. If we waxed or compounded right over that and, and got them stuffed, luckily we have some on the other side, but that's not good form, right? right. So we're gonna tape these off 
And when I tape stuff off on an airplane, um, I, I like to turn it into like a big flag. Mm -hmm. So kind of loop it up. So it's really, really obvious that we have tape on there. Okay. That way, um, if I forget to remove it for whatever reason, the pilot will see it, he can remove it. Or even the wind is gonna catch that loop and remove it. Okay, So. excellent. Um, so we've got two of those. There's a rocket here. A rocket? There's a rocket. This is rocket powered? There, this is a rocket powered airplane. So let's say you're flying along and things go really badly. Uh -huh. um, it, it has a plan B. So you pull this big handle in the cockpit, a rocket powered parachute will blow out of here and straps come out of the skin and the whole plane will actually go down underneath the canopy. Wow. So YouTube Cirrus uh, CAPS deployment, C-A-P-S. That, that's what this rocket system is called. It, it, it's really cool and these guys are the only ones um, that put this on every single plane from the factory. Oh, wow. So. Well, I think we're going to take a little ride later and hopefully we don't hopefully have to use, use that. <laughs> right. Yeah. All right, what do you say? Get take to work? Take, gotta get to work. I mean, we got three guys here today. Yeah, yeah, let's get to no rinsing. So it's it's going to be a long day. Let's do it. It'll be a day. Yeah, you see this? You, you may have to get like a glancing angle at it. Oh yeah, it's not hard to see. And I got headlights too, but um, some secret sauce on there. Secret sauce? Secret sauce. Ooh, it actually says secret sauce. Yeah. <gasps> Ooh, I, I know what that secret sauce yeah. is. <laughs> That's it. That on. I may have to spray it on. I've never done it this way before. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's coming right off. See that color change? Yeah. That's, that's lead. Anywhere you see that color happening, yeah. means you got lead happening. Okay. All right, just got finished with doing the O&R on the plane. Next step is to polish it. Uh, there's some sanding marks here and there on the plane, some light swirls. It's actually not that bad. It's a pretty brand new airplane. We're going to do just a one step. We're not going for perfect paint. Uh, if we were doing perfect paint, we'd probably be here for three or four days. So we're doing the one step with hyper polish. We're using the Rupes Mark II machine on a Rupes uh, yellow pad. So it's turning out great. We've uh, working on the, the front nose here, and then we're going to work our way back. Uh, Murdad is actually going to be using the high speed on the the wings on the top of the wings and underneath the wings. So lots of work to be done. Let's get to it. Looking. Looking good. Doing some edge work. Sweet. All right, we're just finishing up on the Cirrus plane. We got most of the polishing done. We're going to do some touch up spots here and there. Uh, and then we're going to wipe it down with panel wipe and then we're going to go to the coating. But first, we're going to take a little break. We got Casey and Joe over here. They run Airboss Aviation. They got 15,000 square feet of hangar space here. It's a really cool space. And uh, you got some other hangers here, you got some other stuff. Yeah, right next door we got uh, 5,000 square feet with a couple more airplanes that, uh, that live there. And why don't we go check it out? Sweet, let's take a tour. And then maybe there's another airplane over there? Yeah, uh huh? Is it, can we fly it? We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> let's go. We 
we have three airplanes that we keep inside here. We manage them, uh, keep the maintenance in line, make sure that all the aircraft documents and FAA inspections are all completed on time. Um, we also train the owners in their own airplanes. So if somebody's interested in buying an airplane, but they're not a pilot or they're a low experience pilot, low hours, uh, we can provide training for them as well. Um, and then uh, another side business that uh, is involved with our company is also charter charter brokering. Okay. So we actually set up charter flights for people all across, all across the country, um, provide services from everything including ground transportation, hotel reservations, dinner reservations, you name it, we, we set it up for them. Yeah, I mean, the gist of it is, is that we try and create a really unique experience around private aviation. The model of this airplane is called the SR22 uh, Turbo. Um, this is the GTS one. GTS, yeah. It's a it's a platinum version. This is this is a G6, which the airplane you're detailing next door is also a G6. This airplane specifically is the first G6 that was ever made by Cirrus. Mm -hmm. um, so this was delivered in December of 2016. We started flying in January of 2017. Um, it's got about 800 hours on it, which is pretty good for an airplane that's only two years old. Um, the avionics are incredible. It's a simple plane to fly. And of course, you know, with that parachute, that always gives you that extra extra layer of safety. <laughs> We're going to get to the ground somehow. Yeah, yeah. One way or another. Sweet. Let's do it. Let's do it. separate pass, so we'll, we'll use that as a merging area. When we get up there, we're gonna have to draw imaginary lines off the windows and references like that, so we're gonna go a lot by touch. Um, as we go up the wing, that might be like a one-person game up there, but we're gonna sweep around there, go up and do the cowling up to the half, jump around to the other half, and um, swing around once we get that done. That's the hard part. Well, really, the underside of the wings is the hard part. New tops of the wings, that'll be super fast, especially with three of us. I'm excited to see how fast we can code it. Let's do it. Let's do it.
All right, we just finished up. We're done. Clean is done. Crystal serum ultra all over it. It's protected. It's super shiny. Thank you for coming out here, man. Thanks I really for having appreciate me. Showing us your ways. This was a fun project. I can't believe you do these by yourself. All day, every day. That's insane, man. Um, now that we're done, yeah. how about some maintenance tips? For sure. Everybody? So the main reason we did this was to make it easier to clean, though the extra gloss certainly doesn't hurt. So when you go flying, you come back, you got a bunch of bugs on there. 1 to 20 dilution of optimum no rinse, spray it on, lightly wipe it off. Because the coating is going to release stuff easier, you don't have to push very hard or scrub very hard. And that is what's going to protect that paint correction we worked so hard on. A lot of times on these parts of Cirrus's, I'll see a lot of scratch marks from people having to scrub really hard. If you have bugs that don't come off, just let them soak a little bit and you know gently wipe them off that way. That'll help maintain the coating, it'll help maintain this look. Like th there's no reason this plane isn't gonna look like this in a year or two um, with good care. Whereas if you wax this, spend all day waxing it, in about two months it's gonna look just like we started, right? And then you're gonna have white little wax residue all over oh, the place yeah, like and the, the rivets. Props and and, and all the screws. So wa waxing's for eyebrows and like bikini lines and backs. Like don't don't wax the plane. <laughs> it's not necessary. All right, thank you everybody for watching. Uh, please subscribe. Go over to Mir Dad's channel. He's got yeah. a channel if you want to see more airplane detailing. He's got plenty of it on there. It's basically a travel vlog at this point, but yeah. he's all yeah, over the place. A lot of different planes. Uh, look up Aviana Aircraft. And if you see a guy wearing this shirt, because I always wear this shirt, you know you're at the right place. <laughs> all right, guys, thanks for watching again, and we'll see you next time.